Okay, we're back at live at VMworld 2012. This is uh, SiliconAngle.tv's The Cube. This is our final wrap up, day three. Continuous, exclusive coverage of VMworld 2012. Boy, what a set of interviews. I'm John Furrier, and I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Mickey Baum, the analyst, doing all the research, getting all the data, making all the opinions, making moves. Get Dave, what do you think? Well, first thing I want to say, John, is uh, having done this now three years in a row from VMworld, VMware, uh, VMworld 2010 was our first real breakout show. Our first show together was uh, EMC World in 2010. And I just want to say, John, I'm just so thrilled at the way that Silicon Angle and theCUBE is changing the media business, you know, democratizing media, bringing this great content to the, to the masses. I mean, we're sitting here watching theCUBE, Pat Gelsinger's on the big screen here, and uh, their VMware's run, running the rerun of Pat on theCUBE. You know, very proud and, and pleased to be part of it. So thank you for including well, us. In well, really, I would also uh, say that, you know, seeing you at, in AT&T Park on the ground with all the execs at the NetApp event, um, getting all that B-roll. We are the agile media company, and then someone came up to me and said, what you guys are doing is kind of like what VMware's doing in the, in, the, in, the, in the cloud and data center business. You're agile media, you're taking a new approach. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to use that. So, you know. So, so big pat on the back for us, and I, uh, high five, John. I really am, am <laughs> impressed. Now, the second thing I want to say is, in 2010, you and I talked about, you know, on theCUBE, the VMware economy in the enterprise. And, and we made the prediction at that point in time that VMware slash EMC VMware, EMC owns VMware, will be the next $100 billion company in the enterprise. Now, SAP's still a bit ahead of them at about a $70 billion market. When I say $100 billion, I mean market value. We stand by that prediction. It's clear that this is the main enterprise event, VMworld, the VMUGs. The VMware economy is in full swing. The train is in full motion. The NYSERA acquisition, uh, driving networking. VMware's in the driver's seat, John, just as we had predicted, and um, I think it's just going to be expanding even faster. You know, I think one of the things that we really drilled on in 2010 was, one, we were very excited by the map that Paul Moritz put out. We said this is an operating system. Um, that's ratified now three years later, two years later, uh, with the messaging of abstract, pool, automate. But really, Dave, it was the ecosystem. We talked about the ecosystem play was their key to success. Todd Nielsen at the time was talking about that. That's definitely happening, and with Pat Gelsen, at the helm, and with, with acquisitions like Nasira, the talent acquisitions and the technology acquisitions that VMware is putting together is quite an impressive set of activities and quite a run. Yeah, I think what's happening here is that uh, VMware, seeing VMware be extremely aggressive, and I think that, you know, frankly, again, EMC is driving VMware in that direction. They are getting really aggressive about essentially owning that entire stack. I mean, just even, you know, the, the the notion of you know, dynamic ops, being able to manage multi-vendor hypervisors. Yeah, yeah, Dave, if we look back, you know, EMC many years ago moved above storage to really become more relevant to CIOs in general and across the entire uh, infrastructure, what, what they're doing in big data, um, what they're doing in software, and what they're doing in services uh, really kind of grew EMC, and we're seeing VMware, as you know, you know much more than just a hypervisor uh, company. We talked about how uh, you know the acquisition, Dynamic Ops, Winova, Cetus, uh, and uh, you know Nicira are all getting beyond just VMware, vSphere environments. Got you know physical, multi-hypervisor environments. Uh, distributed computing is where you know VMware now has a lot of talent, and uh, you know they can really help transform you know, a greater part of uh, you know the IT environment. Yeah, well sometimes these things are a bit fuzzy, but I think it's clear that the vision that VMware is putting forth is quite compelling. I mean, a lot of that, you know, you got to give credit to guys like Paul Moritz and Steve Harrod who have really driven that vision. Um, and so I think it's clear that the practitioners are lining up behind uh, that vision and adopting VMware, I mean, despite the fact that, hey, I mean, look at Windows Server 2012. Looks good by all accounts. Uh, no question from a functionality standpoint that Microsoft is closing the gap, but in some respects, 
you know, this John, it really doesn't matter. I mean, VMware's got such momentum and is putting forth a vision that is so compelling for people. It's, uh, in the near term, I think it's impenetrable unless they completely well, I think, I up. mean, obviously you heard um, the developer story again, now Todd Nielsen's heading that up, and we've, again, we've had Todd Nielsen on theCUBE, uh, Mark Risen Hopkins is, you know, we are out talking about all the footage we have going back to 2010. Uh, we have so much footage from VMware. Go to youtube.com slash siliconangle and go check out all the footage. And I've had guys come up to me and say, hey, can I play with some of that old footage and put together some trailers and, and, and stories? You may see more of that. But we heard about um, the developer focus on Todd Nielsen two years ago, and I thought what was strikingly about this one is that they are leveraging Cloud Foundry as a, as a stalking horse to start pushing that platform as a service to make the productivity for developers really easy. At the same time, they're going down deep with the, with the total alpha geeks at the low level with Nasira, Dave. So that was one bright spot. The other bright spot is dynamic ops the, the, and VDI. Having that equation, if they can put that together, I'm going to, I say, we're going to look back and say, it was dynamic ops and VDI really made a difference at the top of the stack. And, and Stu, I'd like to get your perspective on what you think about that. Yeah, no, great point. So when we kind of kicked off the coverage for this year, we talked about data infrastructure. And the data that I've seen at the show is that VDI actually surprised me. Uh, every storage company that I talked to was talking about significant percentages of deployments with VDI. I put an article up last week, is VDI the killer app for converged infrastructure? Because you saw somewhere between 25 and 75% of all converged stack deployments have VDI in them, and even a lot of the flash guys are in the you know, 30 to 50 percent uh, deployments being you know, for VDI. So while you know, 2013's not the year of VDI, um, there's, st there's still you know, some strong momentum in, in, in rolling out those VDI deployments. Well, Stu, I mean, that's a great point. First of all, great post, by the way. And again, Wikibon continues to, um, to lead the way uh, in the research side. I mean, you guys just lead it. And of course, SiliconANGLE does, does all the real-time action. You guys are doing a great job. But Ping Lee, when he was on here, Ping Lee being the, one of the leading venture capitalists in, in big data, he works for Excel Partners, he said, that VDI surprised him. Um, he's seeing a lot of entrepreneurs coming in with uh, startups built around the VDI concept. And, and it, although it's changed a lot, it's really finding a nice home. Yeah, and, and, and John, in the, in the VC, you've been talking about the, where there's frothiness and where things are a little bit overvalued. You know, we talk about what is hot. Um, you know, VDI pales in comparison to Flash. Uh, you know, there are so many Flash vendors here. Uh, we had two panels. Uh, I think three quarters of the day on Monday was, uh, you know, some Flash engagement. So, uh, you know, something that we are watching very closely, helping to segment the market, understand the differentiation, and, you know, who's going to succeed, who, you know, probably is going to be acquired, and where the real value in the marketplace is. Uh, Dave and Stu, I want to get your uh, perspective on something. When we started VMworld this year, I put out the notion of data infrastructure, actually we, we talked about it internally, you guys kind of filled in the blanks. Dave, I want to get your take and Stu as well. Uh, one, what do you think about data infrastructure now post VMworld, as this show ends down uh, today and tomorrow, uh, about the notion of data infrastructure and the interplay with big data? Data-driven infrastructure, data-led infrastructure, data infrastructure, as an extension of converged networking. Dave, are we good call? So-so, um, home run, what's your angle on that? Well, I, I think it's a very good call. I think it's the right framework for understanding how the data center is going, and the infrastructure is going to evolve over the next five to seven years. Having said that, I think we've got a long way to go. Uh, Steve Herod, I think, summed it up very well. We've got an A on the, on the servers, you know, maybe a B, B plus on the storage, a C, C, maybe C plus on networking. And that's clearly where all the efforts going in right now. But to me, John and Stu, the evolution of Flash is going to really drive and, and accelerate the need to fix the networking piece. What I'm still, what's still missing, I think, is the bringing together of those big data analytics applications feeding real-time uh, uh, transactional applications and driving new business value. That's where you know, there's a long way to go. So we got to start somewhere. Stu, uh, what do you think? Like starting with, you know, the network and, and uh, the, the infrastructure is absolutely right on. Yeah, so uh, I, I think echoing what Dave said, uh, that the infrastructure piece needs to be able to complement, uh, really serve the application and the data. So uh, what David Floyer says, the IO-centric model uh, of the future needs to help, uh, you know, eliminate the bottlenecks, uh, serve things up, and help IT get 
get, get their job done better. Um, and big data is a tool that's filling into many environments now. Uh, you know, one, one of the kind of real, you talk about the, the alpha geeks that are here, uh, Cloud Physics is a company that came out of Stealth. We actually did a peer end site with them uh, the, the week before the conference. Uh, you know, <laughs> Mendel was there, uh, a lot of the original developers from VMware, and you know, they are helping to take configuration information and use analytics to make that actionable so that we can really you know, get much better utilization uh, out of our infrastructure and simplify and automate things. So soon we'll be able to put out a new product that we previewed here, Dave. I want to just share with you, Dave, our, our VFinder uh, preview. We previewed a lot of new tools, SiliconANGLE Wiki Bond, powered by VDP Finder. Um, and just right now on our, quote, top conversations algorithm that we put together for the VMware ecosystem, obviously VMworld's number one. Um, and VMware, the topics. Um, cloud computing, virtualization, and Horizon top the, the list right now. So cloud computing being defined as private, public, and hybrid. Um, SaaS, vCloud, Azure, vSphere, private cloud, and cloud apps. Yeah, so, so, so it's a cloud-friendly crowd. Yeah, John, what about mobile? Uh, you know, Horizon and what they were talking about. You know, what, what, what's your take on the whole mobile side of what was at the show? Um, first of all, great messaging. I think they're right on the money relative to the, to the, to the trajectory of their strategy. Um, multiple devices and managing that directly with a service fabric like uh, Dynamic Ops is absolutely the way to go, I think. Um, so that's good but we talked with Chris Hoff on the security sides too. There is some real issues that need to be resolved on the security side, multiple endpoints. We also had Simon Crosby on, who's an entrepreneur and the, co and the founder, or co-founder, he might have another founder, of Bromium, which is taking a unique approach to solving some of these problems. So, so you know, we heard from Todd Nielsen talking about application hell, uh, application server hell. So I think, you know, yes, it's the right way to go. I think the theme of rewriting applications the more core apps, it has to happen. So it's, yes, it's, I, I totally think mobility is driving that. And I think what really no one connected the dots on yet is the big data aspect. I know they did uh, the project, uh, what's it, uh, Ser Serengeti? Yeah, Serengeti. Serengeti, they did a little demo. It was just a demo, but ultimately, the big data was one part of the show that I didn't see a lot. So to me, if, if you're not talking big data, Mobile's nothing. Yeah, well Ser Serengeti handles the infrastructure component of big data, uh, not so much the analytics side. But that didn't really come across loud and clear. Yeah. I mean, from my, my take, it's like, yeah, they did this little demo, I mean, come on Stu, what's your take on it? Yeah, no, I mean, it, drilled it, down it, on, it, 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 it seemed to it, be kind of marketing fluff. Yeah, well, so, what VMware's looking to do is we're 60% virtualized today, and wanna, if we want to get to, as Pat laid out the audacious goal of over 90% virtualized, um, the concern is, does big data become a silo? You know, John, I mean, you, you've been at the, you know, the, the, the start of uh, all the Hadoop action, and you know, they said, I don't want legacy storage. I don't want SAN environments, and VMware comes in and says, we want to take your big data environment, virtualize it, and therefore, I can put it on infrastructure, yeah. much of which today yeah. is more of that legacy environment. And Stu, I mean, you bring up a good point, just to riff on that a little bit. I mean, obviously, things that I see in the show that popped out that were like the obvious, you know, shiny pebble that pops out of the, the show was one, storage validates our original thesis. I mean, not to pump ourselves up anymore, but storage, yes, is at the center of the value proposition. We made that right call. But the other one is, is that when we had Martin on from Nasira, he basically said some really cool things that apply to what's happening at VMware. They're disrupting. They want to change the game and use virtualization as that lever, that, that real enabling um, technology that's going to be the lever for all this. So, you know, doing it at the network layer, network, I mean, networking side, to the low levels is fantastic, all the way up to the top. So to me, I think the mobile equation with big data, the virtualization gives them a lot of, of, of flexibility. And then they had conversations like stateless applications. This is the future. So, you know, VMware's got the messaging down. Old way, new way. And I think the new experiences is, is just right on, spot on messaging. Now, reality, uh, the, how fast they get there, we the subject of their, uh, their execution. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's going to be a wrap, unless Dave, you want to say anything else? Well, uh, again, John, it's just really a pleasure working with you. Uh, I think that the things that we're going to look for here are really the execution of that software-defined data center, 
number one. Number two, the ability of the ecosystem to plug into that vision. All the marketing is there. We heard from everybody who came by, yes, we're software-defined data center, yes, we're software-defined storage, yes, we're software-defined network. Everybody's hopping on that bandwagon. Um, everybody's claiming leadership position there. So we're going to have to, uh, over the next 12 months, sift out the pretenders from the contenders. And we'll be doing that here on theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, and just uh, really look forward to uh, okay. sharing that with our community. Well, that's a wrap here. I want to thank uh, Mark Risen Hopkins and Kian for holding down the fort, and the folks from uh, Moscone helping us out there, the extra hands. Stu Miniman out there getting the pound the pavement, getting all the scoops, doing the analysis, setting up briefings. Hey, Art hey, Lindsay, guys, Fred I mean, Lattimore's been, been, been blogging and uh, the whole team. Yeah, Scott Kristen Lowe, Nicole Jeff Kelly team. back in the home front, uh, working on the schedule, and, and guys, Nicole. do you know how many people have come to me and said, I don't know how you two do it. So <laughs> when I put this schedule together, uh, I said, you know, let's you know, mix up the hosts and everything, and you guys said, no, we've got such good guests. You guys are going to go do it, you plow through it. Phenomenal guests, great conversations, big buzz across the show, so you know, awesome job, guys. Great job with the team. Kristen Nicole with our Skype remotes in. We're going to do that as a, as a matter of all of our events now. You're going to see a lot of Skype calling in. Go to siliconangle.com for the reference point of tech innovation. All free content there. Go to wikibon.org where you get all the free research. We do not have a paywall. There's no charging, all free content. We want to provide the data for the data infrastructure in the big data world, all free, use it. We'd like to serve that that way. And this is theCUBE, siliconangle.tv. That's a wrap from VMworld 2012. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We'll see you at the next show. <laughs>